Um, what we hope to do with this meetup is have something, particularly given the spread of the um, questionnaire results, we hope to do something which is kind of for people who don't know um, what deep learning is and want an introduction to TensorFlow, um, but also something which is more of a like a crowd please or someone so something which is more cutting edge. So I'm not going to say that this is this thing is particularly cutting edge because we did once we saw the um, responses we did dial things down a bit, um, but. We, there, there will be more cutting edge stuff, and as you know, it may be that we start to do other meetup uh, events in other formats. So it could be that we have like a, an experts paper meeting or whatever. So we could have we could split it. Now we can kind of see the size of people, you know, the size of the crowd. Um, anyway, let me just talk a little bit about this uh, going deeper transfer learning. Um, unfortunately, this is something which some of you people will have seen me do before. Um, this is the first time I've done it in TensorFlow. Um, and let me just explain that. Before, I've been programming this stuff in Theano with the lasagna layers thing on top. And this is kind of a, Theano is a, a research-based deep learning framework out of Montreal. Um, but what I've concluded since last summer is that TensorFlow is probably the winner of this framework race, at least for the foreseeable future, um, with all this nice industrial stuff. I should be retooling into, Theana, into TensorFlow. So that's what I've taken the opportunity to do for this. So, so about me, sorry, here we go. I, I come up through finance, um, startups and stuff. Um, I took a year out basically in 2014, that's some fun. I've been doing a serious kind of natural language processing project since then, funded in SG. Um, and I wrote a couple of papers, whatever. So. Um, so basically, the overview for this kind of something more challenging talk, which will probably be 20 minutes, 30 minutes, depending on, on how it goes, um, I want to take a state-of-the-art TensorFlow model. Um, I want to solve a problem that it wasn't trained for. And so I'm going to be using deep learning here as a component of my solution, rather than the primary focus of what I'm trying to build. So this is kind of... Um, it's in, in a way, it's a more industrial, commercial kind of application for what, what's going on here. So the goal, okay, for the goal for this kind of toy problem is I want to distinguish pictures of classic and modern sports cars. Um, you'll see some classic and modern sports cars a bit later. Um, it's not so easy to say what the difference is. Um, it obviously could be different types of images, um, and it could be lots of different classes. So among I'm just doing a very simple two-class thing, um, but it's quite complicated images. What I want to do is I want to have a very small training time. So I don't want to be retraining some huge network, um, particularly if I've only got, in this case, 20 training examples. So I'm not going to do um, any fantastic million uh, image training. I've got 20 images to choose for me. Um, and I also want to be able to put this in production, meaning I want this so I can just run it um, as a component of, of something else. So, so basically, um, one of the things which has been powering the deep learning field forwards is an Im image classification task called ImageNet. And this has been a competition where they have 15 million labeled images from 22,000 categories. And you can see some of them here. Um, if we go for this, this is a picture of a hot dog in a bun. And here are some of the categories, which will be something I can't, some food I don't know. These are hot dogs, lots of different pictures of hot dogs, lots of different pictures of cheeseburgers, lots of different pictures of plates. So the task for ImageNet is to classify for any given, any one of these images, which of a thousand different categories it's from. And it used to be that people could score adequately well. Um, and we're making incremental changes in, in, in how well they can do this. But the deep learning people came along and kind of tore this to shreds. And in particular, Google came up with um, Google and Next, which is what we're actually going to use here back in 2014. Suddenly, the, 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 this stuff is now being done by further iterations of this kind of theme uh, better than humans can. So. The way you can measure whether something is better than humans is you take a human and see whether it beats him. The 
the question there is, are there labeling errors? So there you need a committee of humans. And so the way that they labeled these things is by um, running it on Mechanical Turk and asking people, what category is this cheeseburger in? So, so this, the network we're going to use here is a 2014 state-of-the-art. Um, it's called Google the Net, also called Inception for version 1. The nice thing about this is that um, there is an existing model already trained for this task. And it's available for download. It's all free. Um, and there's lots of different models which are out there. There's a model zoo for TensorFlow. So what, I'm gonna, what I have on my machine, and this is a small model, so it's a 20, meg kind of 20 megabytes kind of model. So it's not a very big model. Um, TensorNet Inception 4 is more like a 200 meg model which is a bit heavy. So I'm working here on my laptop. You're going to see it work in real time. Um, and the trick here is in instead of the softmax layer at the end, which is, I'll show you a diagram, and it should be clear to anyone who kind of is following along. Instead of using the, the softmax, the, the, the logits to get me probabilities, I'm going to strip that away, and I'm going to train a support vector machine to just distinguish between these classes. So I'm actually not going to retrain the inception network at all. I'm going to just use it as a component, strip off the top classification piece, and replace it with an SVM. Now, SVMs are pretty well understood. So here, I'm just using inception as a featureizer for images. So here's a network picture. Basically, this is what the ImageNet network is designed for. You put in an image at the bottom. There's this black box, which is the inception network, which is a bunch of CNNs, or convolutional neural networks, followed by a dense network, followed by this logits. And this, this logits layer is essentially the same as the 0 to 10 that um, Sam had for his digits. This is um, you know, 1 to 1,000 for the different classes for ImageNet. Basically, to actually get the ImageNet output, that uses a softmax function, then uses and then chooses the highest one of these to, to give you this is the class that this is in. Um, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore this neat piece of classification technology that they've got, and just say, well, let's use these outputs um, as in, as inputs to an SVM and see what the and just treat these as being features. Now, if we pick out one of these, it could be. This class could be cheeseburger, and the, this class could be parrot. And this other class could be husky dog. I mean, there's all sorts of classes in here. Um, but basically, what, I'm go what I'll be doing is I'll be extracting how the features of these photos, saying how much is this photo like a parrot? How much is this like a husky dog? Now, it turns out the modern cars and classical cars can be distinguished that way, so, so, which is interesting. So let me go to some code. OK, this code is all up on GitHub. And here's my Jupyter Notebook. OK, so da, da, da. can people see? You can see. Can everyone see this enough? You can see it, OK. So basically, I'm pulling in TensorFlow. Um, I pull in this model. So here is the, what the inception architecture is. Um, basically, it feeds for this way. Here you put your image. It goes through lots and lots of convolutional layers, da, 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 all the way up to the end with a softmax and your output. So having done that, what I do is I'll, I'll actually have a download for the checkpoint. So this is the checkpoint here, which is a tar file. Um, basically, I have it locally stored. doesn't download it now. Um, but it's all there, even the big models are there, um, up in, you know, from Google. And they've retrained these. So an inception thing takes about a week to retrain on a, on a bunch of, it could be 64 GPUs. So you don't really want to be training this thing on your own. Um, you also need the, in, the ImageNet training set is a 106, or 140 gig file, which is, not, is no fun to download. Okay, so what I'm doing here is it, basically there's, there's also an inception um, library, which is part of 
the Slim TF Slim. So it's basically, this thing is designed so that um, it already knows the network. It can preload it. Um, this has loaded it. I can get some labels. Sorry, this is, this is loading up the ImageNet labels. So I need to know which location corresponds to which class. Um, obviously, the digits version is easy. So here, let me just run that. So here we're going through basically the same steps as the MNIST example, in that we reset the default graph, we create a placeholder, which is where my images are going to go. This is as an input. Um, but from this image input, I'm then going to do some TensorFlow steps, because TensorFlow has various pre-processing or, or, gra ha or graphics handling commands, because a lot of this stuff works with images. So there's all sorts of clipping and rotating um, stuff so, so that you can pre-process these as images. Uh, I'm also going to pull out a numpy image, just so I can see what it's actually looking at. And here, with this Inception version 1 arg scope, I'm going to actually just pull in the, ent the entire Inception verse version 1 model. My init function, rather than just being pick some random weights, is going to be assign this from a checkpoint. So this is, this instead of when I run the init thing on my graph or in my session, it won't initialize everything from random, it'll initialize everything from disk. And so this is define the model. And now let's just so uh, one of the issues with having this on a nice tensorboard graph is that it just says input inception one output so there's a big blob there you can delve into it if you want um, but it's uh, let me just show you I can go back a bit da, da, da. Your code. so this is, is the code behind the inception one model um, so this is actually smaller than the Inception 2 and the Inception 3. Um, basically, we have a kind of a base Inception piece, which is just this. And then these are combined together. And there's, this is a detailed model put together by many smart people uh, in, all, in 2014. It's got much more complicated since then. But fortunately, they have written that code, and we don't have to. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to load an example image just to show you. Um, one of the things here is that there's a TensorFlow, in order to become efficient, really wants to do the loading itself. So in order to pump this, get this pumping the information through, it wants you to set up queues of images, um, and it will, it will then handle the whole ingestion process itself. <coughs> The problem with that is it's kind of complicated to do in a, a Jupyter notebook right here. Um, so here I'm going to do the, the very simplest thing, which is load a numpy image and stuff the numpy image in. But what TensorFlow would love me to do is create a, create a uh, as, as you see in this one, create a file name queue, and then it will then run the queue and do the batching and do all of this stuff itself. Um, because then it can lay it out across potentially a distributed cluster and do everything just right. Here I just want to load some images and, and have a look. So here I do the kind of the simple read the image. So th this image is a tensor, um, which is 224 by 224 by RGB. Um, and this is kind of a sanity check, what, what kind of numbers have I got in the corner. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop out the middle section of it. I mean, this happens to be the right size already, but um, basically if you've got odd shapes, you need to think about how am I going to do it? Am I going to pad it? Am I going to... What, what do you do? Because you want everything to be basically... In order to make this efficient, TensorFlow is going to, go, it's going to want to lay it out without all this change of the variability of image size. So it's going to want a, one, one set of parameters and it's then going to blast it across your GPU array or whatever. So let's just run this thing. So now we've defined the network. Um, here I'm going to pick a session. I'm going to init the, fun init the session, which loads the, d the data. And then I'm going to pick up the numpy image and the probabilities from the top layer. And I'm just going to just show it. So this will show, show. Here is an image. 
Um, well, this is the image I pulled off the disk, and you can see here that the probabilities it thinks that this is a highest probability is tabby cat, which is good. So you, and it's also interesting that the kind of the second in line things are tiger cat, Egyptian cat, lynx. Um, so it's got a fair idea that this is a cat. Um, in particular, it's getting it right. So. Okay. So this is the same diagram we had before. Basically, what you've seen is this going in, this black box, coming out and then telling us the probabilities here. So what we're now going to do is go from the image through the black box and just learn a bunch of, a bunch of features. So what I have on disk, and I'm not sure whether I... Excuse me. Let me just show you this on disk. No, no. So I have a cars directory here, and inside the inside this thing, I have surprisingly little data. Let's do it the other way. So in, in this directory, I just have a bunch of car images. And I have two sets of images, one of which is called cla one, two directories, one of which is called classic, and the other's called modern. So basically, I, I pick some photos off Flickr, I put these into two separate directories, and I'm going to use those directory names as the classification for, for, for these images. Now, in the upper directory here, I've got a bunch of test images, which I don't know the labels for. So that's the game. So having picked, basically this picks up the, the list of classics. So it's a classic directory, there's a modern directory. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through every file in this directory. I'm going to crop it. I'm going to find the logits level, which is the, all the classes. And then I'm just going to add these to features. So basically, I'm going to do something like a psychic learn model. And I'm going to fit SVM. So basically, this is featurizing all these pictures. So here we go with the training data. OK, so here's some, here's some training. OK, my machine is thinking a bit now. So here's some classic cars, went through the classic directory. Here's a modern cars, it went through the modern directory. Come on. It's thinking hard. And what I'm going to do now is build an SVM over those features. She's having a connection for some reason. For some reason, my machine is uh, not behaving. Come on. Here we go. Come on. Uh, 
as they say, this doesn't happen normally. So, so we're sc sorry. Th this I'm running through the whole thing again. I'm sorry. I restarted this thing because the my stupid <coughs> thumbnail viewer fashion machine. So, okay. So this whole thing then retrain the actual training for this um, SVM thing takes that long, right? This is a a very quick SVM that it fits on essentially 20 images worth of a thousand features. So there was no big um, training loop to do and I can then just run this on the actual models in the directory in the test set so here this is images it has never seen before um, it thinks that this is a modern car this one it thinks is a classic car this one it's classified as modern so this is actually doing quite a good job out of just 10 examples of each um, it actually thinks this Prius is modern. And it's not a sports car, but anyway. Um, so, so this is just basically showing that the SVM we trained can classify based on the features that Inception is producing because Inception understands, understands what images are about. So if I go back to, to here, code is in GitHub. Conclusions, okay, this thing really works. Um, we didn't have to train a deep neural network we could plug this TensorFlow model into an existing pipeline. And this is actually something where the TensorFlow Summit has something to say about these pipelines, because not only are they talking about deep learning, but they're talking about the whole cloud-based learning um, and, and setting up proper uh, processes. So I guess time for questions quickly, and then we can then, we can then do the quick sent TensorFlow Summit wrap up. It's also a big one. I'm assuming that there's no really back propagation. Everything no, no. Right, this, so. this includes no, pro no back propagation at all. So just use the, the end result, with yeah. the features, and everything that is happening there, and you yeah. just train it, right? So I, I'm just assuming that inception, that the, you can imagine that if, if, stuff, the, yeah. if the image net thing had focused more on product, it could be even better. It fo fo focus on man-made things. The ImageNet test set has, or training set, has got an awful lot of dogs in, but not that many cats. So on the other hand, it may be that it has, a, it has quite a lot of flowers. It may be that it's saying, I like this car as a modern car because it's got petals for wheels. Whereas the other one, the classic cars tend to have round things for wheels. So it may, it, it is, abstractly doing this, it doesn't know about sports cars or, or what they look like, it, but it does know about curves. So for SVM, you don't use TensorFlow anymore? No, no, no I've, basically I've, taken, I've used TensorFlow to create some features and then I, I, can, I don't want to throw it away because hopefully I've got a streaming process where more and more images are beginning shoved through this thing to give me my thousand weight. Right, right. So, so this is this is if you look at that, there is an example called for TensorFlow for poets, I think, 
where they actually say, well, let's load up one of these networks, and then we'll do some fine-tuning. But there you get involved in tuning these, these neurons with some kind of gradient descent, and you're taking small steps, and, and all this kind of thing. And maybe you're actually having broad implications across the whole network, which could be good if you've got tons of data and tons of time. But this is a very simple way of just no. tricking it to giving the... Okay, no, but I was just... Something very similar to what you just did, but it's, it's still inside TensorFlow. So you can sure. use TensorFlow okay. and stuff like that. Right, right. But it'd be a very small network, because SVM is essentially fairly shallow. Mm -hmm. It means it is... Yeah, I have actually a question. No, I, so basic. So, so TensorFlow, even though it is, has imported this large inception network, and the basically, as as far as I'm concerned, I'm using it as you know f of x equals y, and that's it. But you can actually say you can inquire. Well, what would it say at this particular level? And there's bunches of levels with various kind of constriction points along the way. I could take out other levels. Yeah. Um, I haven't tried it to, to have a look. And there you get more like a picture's worth of, le of features rather than this, thousand, this string of a thousand numbers. Right? So, so at, each, at each intermediate level, it'd be more like pictures with CNN kind of features. Um, on the other hand, if you want to play around with this thing, you, there's this nice stuff called the deep dream kind of things where they try and match um, images to being interesting images and there you do tend to f featureize at lots of different levels so it's at the highest level it's a cat but I want to, all the, the local features to be as fishy as possible and then you get a, like a fish face cat that's, like, but that's what you that's the kind of thing you can do with these kind of pre-trained models there's a lot of flexibility do you want, or, or shall we shall I just make rather than jigger around the AV too much let me just give you the kind of the next meetup things. Okay, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah.